Hey everyone, I'm Bennett. It's hunting and camping season here in Alaska, and I'm super excited. Here's the problem. Alaska has famously bad weather and it's unpredictable. It could be a beautiful day like today and tomorrow you could have rain, snow, sleet, hail, and high winds and that threatens your life in the backcountry. I've spent the last 10 years trying to come up with the perfect kit to survive in the backcountry and I think I've found it and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go. It's a wild the foundation of any kit for Alaska backcountry and off-grid camping is a tent and I think I've found one of the best ones. This is not a little tent, it's quite heavy. This Arctic oven tent comes in a two-piece shell. The base layer, or the main body of the tent, is this. This is a fire retardant material because this thing is built to have a wood stove inside of it. You don't want your tent burning down. So this is a fire resistant material. It's also insulating. This is something you would use for car camping or if you're going in on a heavy duty ATV or maybe even a larger aircraft or a boat that flies you in. This works really well. This is not something you'd ever want to pack on your back. So here's the Arctic oven tent. I've got it set up. So the next step in this process is we have the cots, we have some chairs, and I have these brand new sleeping pads made by a company called Hosley, H-A-Z-L-I, and they're brilliant. There's one very unique aspect of these sleeping pads that changes the game for me in the backcountry, and I can't wait to show it to you. So my cots came with the Arctic oven tent. One of the reasons I love this tent is this right here. This is what's called a vestibule and it gives you a porch, it gives you an awning, it gives you some protection to let you put dirty clothes, muddy boots, and other gear that you don't want to take inside of your living space with you, and it's just out here, and I love this part. It takes a little longer to set up, and it's a little bit heavier, but it's a really nice item, and it's a really nice element to this tent. This tent is very strong. It can handle heavy snow loads, it can handle high winds, heavy rain, uh, sleet and hail. This will keep you dry when other tents will collapse, and that's why I like this tent, and it's the only tent I'll use in the deep pack country. One of the things about Alaska is what I've seen many other places is when the weather turns bad you just pack up and go to your car and get out of there. Well you can't run away from the weather in Alaska. You're stuck back there and if an airplane has dropped you or if a boat boat has dropped you on an island there may not be someone to come and get you for days and even if you desperately need to get out that doesn't mean someone can get in to get you out of there. So your tent could save your life. On a mountain goat hunt several years ago I came very close to losing my life when my friend's tent collapsed in the middle of a snowstorm and a high windstorm. It was only because of my mountaineering tent that was very tough, barely saved us. I did not want to ever do that again. So that's why I bought this tent. Here's how we put together the cots. These metal cots are a bit finicky, but they're worth the time in a car camping situation if you're not in a big hurry. Okay, so we have the main bars to the cot to put together. They're a little bit finicky. You've got to slide one tube over the next. And they don't seem to stay sometimes. So it takes a little bit of patience and practice. It's less fun in the middle of the winter when it's freezing outside. So this is the cot. I got these cots years ago at the Arctic Oven Tent location in Anchorage, and this is what they look like put together, fully assembled, very smartly designed. The entire cot fits in here, and this hangs here so you can put gear in it. When you're resting at night, you can put all your important items in there. It's a good little storage. Okay. One of the things you don't want to do is carry so much dirt and debris into your tent. You want to avoid that as much as possible. And the way to do that is to avoid going in and out of the tent too many times. So what I like to do, the weather and time permits, is to set up everything that goes in the tent first outside and then make one trip into the tent for everything. And that's a much better way to do that. I bought this tent and these cots on the used market and they came from a professional dog musher. And they had camped in these tents year round and they made these. And this is a platform for the legs. So when the legs sit on the floor of the tent, this provides a better base for them. And uh, bravo to Bron and Aaron for doing that. So if you're curious, that's what these are. And it's a very smart way to preserve the floor of your tent and to give your cots more stability. And this is what they look like if you want to make them for yourself. It's pretty easy. So what else do I have in here? I have, I have a clothesline. It hangs inside the tent up at the top. And this is where you hang your gear at night so for it to dry out and stay as fresh as it can be. And this is a little electric lantern that I like to hang inside the tent. And you'd be amazed at how much light this gives off. One other tip I'd love to share with you is this. So what do you do with this bag after it's done? You want to insulate as much as you can under the tent. The cold air comes from the ground up through the floor and into the tent. So you want to stuff a lot of stuff under the tent to provide a, la a layer of insulation between you and the floor. So when we put these tents inside, this goes under the tent 
or under the cots. A little bit of comfort outside. Flex Light REI camp chairs. I bought this at REI a couple years ago for our camper van. Quite useful. You need a place to sit to get off your feet and relax. And this is a way to do that. This is the finished REI camp chair. Someone asked me once if we use these chairs inside the tent. We usually don't put chairs in the tent because we have the cots. We can sit on the cots like a bench seat and that seems to work just fine. If you're worried about get them getting wet at night or at least you know from morning precipitation all you do is that and it stays fairly dry. If you're worried about the wind kicking up and then blowing away, hide them inside the vestibule of the tent. <laughs> Quite comfortable. One of the most important things for your comfort and your survivability in the backcountry is a sleeping bag. A sleeping bag can literally save your life in the backcountry of Alaska when things get cold and nasty if you have a tent failure. The most popular and trendy thing to use right now is goose down. And goose down is very light, very warm, and very comfortable. There's a problem with it, and that is delicate. Goose down, if it gets wet, will give you no warmth. And that becomes useless. It rains, folks. Alaska is not a desert it's not Colorado, it's not New Mexico. It rains a lot. Alaska's wet. Most of Alaska is very wet. And if you go into the backcountry for any, any length of time, you can count on cold rain. Even in the middle of the summer, especially in the high country, you could count on maybe snow and freezing rain. So I don't use down anything in Alaska if I have a choice. One of the old master hunting guides, he had hunted and guided brown bears as a master guide in Kodiak, Alaska for 40 years. And he said to me, he said, Bennett, I never allow goose down sleeping bags in camp. He said synthetic bags only for that reason. Synthetic bags will stay warmer even when wet. Now the downside to a synthetic bag is a little bit heavy, a little bit bulky. It is more affordable, but in this case, the weight and the bulk is irrelevant because I'm not carrying this on my back. So this is my favorite bag. This is a sleeping bag rated to, I believe, zero degrees, and it is made by a company called Kifaru. All of Kifaru's items are made in the United States. They source United States materials by American workers. And uh, if you don't want to support overseas, if you don't want to support the communists, if you want to support free America, this is the way you do it. You buy something like this. And by the way, it's a fantastic bag. One of the things I love most about this sleeping bag is the zipper. The zipper is down the middle right here. It's not on my sides. It's not in the back. It's just right down the middle. And guys, I gotta tell you, little things like that make such a big difference. You can zip on and off. In the middle of the night when I'm rolling around and I get kind of claustrophobic, I go to unzip myself. I can't find the zipper and I'm stuck in this bag. Or, God forbid, if a bear shows up in your tent and you need to get out of your bag fast, you can't be fumbling with zippers. That zipper is always where it needs to be, which is right here. You can quickly unzip it, throw it off of you. And that is why I love this Kifaru zero degree synthetic sleeping bag. And this is the only bag I use in Alaska. One more comment about sleeping bags. If you are going on an expedition where you have to carry your gear on your back and it is sub-zero and dry, like if you are climbing Mount McKinley or Denali or mountain climbing somewhere, or if you're going to you know, sub-zero Alaska where you need a very, very warm bag and weight matters, then of course down is probably your choice because you're not really worried about the rain at that point. But for hunting season in Alaska, most of hunting season is in the fall and it's rainy. And this is my choice. Let's put this inside the tent and we'll show you how we set up inside. So like I said, I do my best to not make too many trips in and out of a tent, especially when it's muddy. And that's why I've set everything up first and then I carry it into the tent. I think this is a great time to share with you something that found me recently. I got an email from this company called Hosley, H-A-Z-L-I. And they said, we love your channel in Alaska. and We'd love to send you some of our sleeping pads to try out. And I said, absolutely. One of the problems with sleeping pads in Alaska is, well, okay. We have many problems with sleeping pads in Alaska. There's no perfect pad. If you buy a really ultralight pad, then you're standing out here blowing on it for the next 20 minutes until you get lightheaded. And it provides minimal insulation, minimal comfort, and minimal safety because eventually they pop and you're sleeping on the ground again. Those are great for backpacking, but not great for this kind of camping. So then the other way you go is you can buy a giant foam pad that's huge and it gets smelly after a while and it's just really large and it starts to sink in the middle of the night. It's not so great. One of the other problem is, so you could buy like an air mattress with a big electric air pump. Well, well, in the back country you need a power source to run the air pump and the air mattress is unbelievably bulky and it's very noisy if you're somewhere where you got to keep your noise down when you set up that doesn't work we struggled for years to find the perfect pad and i've never found the perfect pad until now there is no better sleeping pad that i know of for alaska with this kind of camping and this kind of tent than this. This is the Hosley. Hosley made this sleeping pad and it has a built-in air pump. That's right guys, a built-in battery-powered air pump. So Hosley did a really good job building these, these new sleeping pads. Comes in a really smart carry case, straps to hold it together. It, you can see it's insulated. 
and it's quite thin when it's compressed. And the absolutely most brilliant design of this pad is this right here, folks. This is the Hosley Ventura, and this right here is the air pump. It's incredible. I love this thing. Let me show you why. So instead of having to blow on this thing for the next hour and uh, get lightheaded from all the blowing I'm having to do with this thing, this thing will inflate itself without needing a big, large, separate air compressor or extra batteries. All you do is the flip of a switch says to the inflate. And here we go. We're almost there already. Hosley says this takes less than one minute to inflate. And they're right, we're done. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. This thing is incredible, I love it. They were smart enough to put just a little bit of a pillow at this end of the pad, in case you forget a pillow at home like a camp pillow. What a way to go. Thanks to the brilliant designers at Hosley and this is the Ventura pad. I will put a link to where I found these pads and their website in the, des the description of this video. And I hope you check them out. That's how we will spend our nights in the back country, waiting for the caribou to show up. So this ground cloth will give us a little bit more of a place to put dirty items that we don't want in the tent. It also allows us to step out of the tent onto something dry without having to put shoes on every time we come out. And it just goes like that. And one of the benefits of it is, so it's, as we get dirty, you just grab the tarp, like, you know, if, if a bunch of dirt gets on that tarp, it's very easy to manage, but all you do is this, you grab it, shake it out, and you get it back in. All right, the next step I'd love to share with you is how we cook and eat in the backcountry. And on this trip, we're not worried about weight and bulk and all of that because we're driving in my truck to the campsite. We're simply unloading the truck at the campsite and setting up camp there. And then we take the four-wheelers, the ATVs, into the backcountry for day hunts. So when you camp in the backcountry, something like this is fantastic. This is a jet boil. I forget the name of it, the model of it, but I'll put that in the description. Jet boil doesn't pay us for this. It's just something I'd love to share with you. It comes in this really great carrying case and it takes propane bottles look like this. So this is our stove kit and this is my cooking pot kit. This is made by Stanley. I bought it at an REI co-op in Anchorage, Alaska. And it's a pretty affordable little kit, stainless steel, and it's self-contained, which I really like. So it has all sorts of things in there. A frying pan, a boiling pot, a strainer for liquids. It came with spatula, and a heavy spoon, plastic bowls, plastic plates, and some plastic utensils. Really great little kit, really smartly designed. It works on induction cooktops. If you have one of those, like an electric induction cooktop in your camper van or otherwise, this is why we take this and that's how it looks as we cook. I love these cups. These are made by Sea to Summit, basically a sippy cup for adults. It keeps beverages warm or cool and they're easy to manage. Keep a few assortment of towels and rags to clean up. I bring metal utensils with us. This is a kit that I bought online. I put these metal spoons and forks and knives in it and it seems to hold them together pretty well works out like we want. If we are in an emergency situation and we need to filter our water, this is by far the best water filter I've ever found. So I've used the ones that pump and other designs and I've had a lot of failures and one failure of the water system caused me to get Giardia and made me very sick. So this is the only water filter kit I ever use now. And this is how this works. You scoop up the water from the lake or the pond or wherever you're getting water from and it has the water filter bent built in. And as long as you're smart enough to remember screw that water filter in so no dirty water passes. All the water passes through here, gives you clean drinking water out of the other end. It's gravity fed so you hold it in a tree and it flows out of this funnel and through this. The only thing I'll tell you is be sure you screw this filter in. Ask me how I know. I made one very big mistake on a goat hunt. I forgot to screw my filter into this thing and I scooped up a whole bunch of water and drank a bunch of dirty water out of this bag because I thought it was filtered when it wasn't. It's my fault but I still love this bag. Um, there's nothing to fail here right like on the uh, on the mechanical pumps especially when they freeze they can fail. And this is a better choice. In my opinion, this is what I like. 
And so this is what we use for water. I like to keep a camp knife. It's great for chopping wood or heavy duty uses outside. This one was made by Benchmade and uh, it does a really good job at, if I have to split little pieces of firewood for kindling or other outdoor activities, this is the one I use. It's not something I'd carry around with me. It's too big and heavy and bulky for that. I always keep a hatchet for splitting firewood for the camp. And this is a great little hatchet made by Gerber. If you need a sink to wash up dishes, this is what works really well for us. It's called Sea to Summit, the kitchen sink, oddly enough. Brilliant. And this is what it looks like. You can scoop water out of this or fill it with water, hang it or set it down and it will support itself with the water in it. And you can use this for washing dishes or washing your face or otherwise. It works really, really well. It packs up quite nicely. This is my choice for fire starter for campfires and other things. They look like this. Adventure in the Alaskan backcountry is an outdoor gear intensive effort. Having the right tools for the adventure can mean the difference between having fun or being miserable. Learning to select and use the correct gear could also save your life. This is a base of knowledge that is not easily gained through books and videos. This is best built through experience, mistakes, and lessons learned. In short, the best way to get prepared is to get out there and do it yourself and learn as you go. I hope this video helps speed up that learning process for you so you can get out there more often and have more fun while you're doing it. We at Living My Alaska are outdoor gear obsessed and we put together a video playlist just for you. It's called Tools and Toys for Alaska. Join me there. Let's go.